Welcome to episode two of the Attorney Up and to the Right Marketing Podcast. I am joined today by my co-host, my partner, and my COO, Cesar Cobo. How are you doing today, man? Doing good. Uh, excited to talk about this topic. How are the kids? I know you guys were a little sick. How's everything going in the house? Uh, well, as you can probably tell from my voice, I haven't fully recovered yet, but otherwise we're we're okay. Yeah, I had it too. I was sick for, I'm still, it's crazy. I'm still shaking it. It's been, I'm going on like three weeks now and uh, I'm still foggy brain a little bit. But anyways, we got a job to do, so we'll move on. So I got a presentation over here. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. For those of you listening on the podcast too, just make sure that you check us out on YouTube where we will be, uh, you'll be able to see all this stuff. So what I wanna talk about today, Caesar. Something that's been on my mind a, while, a lot is, you know, we work with a lot of law firms, talk to a lot of law firms. And, you know, I will say over the last year, I've probably spoke with about 100, 100 attorneys face to face over Zoom. The number one question that I ask them is, what are your goals? What are your problems? What are your challenges? And without hesitation, they all say it's lead generation. But specifically, it's not just generating leads, it's, it's generating quality leads that aren't tire kickers. I hear that word a lot that actually turn into cases if they're doing litigation and are aligned with the type of cases that they want to work with. They find that a lot of internet leads or just a lot of leads in general, right? That come in, they're just, they're kind of time wasters. And this is also supported by a study done by Martindale that basically the top three things that attorneys complained about about their jobs was dealing with difficult clients, which is out of your control. We deal with difficult clients here as well, working long hours, and then finally generating leads and generating new clients. So I think part of this, Caesar, and y your wife is an attorney, so you might be able to chime in on this too, but part of what I've researched and understand about the market is that there's a bit of an issue that leads to this that's not a marketing issue, which is a lot of folks folks go to law school because not just because they want to become an attorney, but because they know it's a lucrative career. They know it's a good, safe career. But what's happened is in this country, we've had so many people that go to law school that when they graduate, the jobs aren't necessarily lined up for them like they thought they would. So what happens is you have a lot of solo practices. We get a lot of leads from solo practices from younger law firms that essentially started their own firm because they couldn't find good, respectable work or they couldn't get the pay grade that they wanted. So they started their own firm. So essentially now from a marketing and business point of view, what we have is a market that's flooded with law firms that are all competing for the same piece of pie. And then also at the top, you've got some top, top, top law firms that are just outspending the market and spending quarter million dollars a month on marketing and advertising. That's really kind of suppressing those law firms down there. Another slide here that I think is important is when we now start to talk about, okay, that's fine. There's nothing we can do about that, Ryan. It's competitive. We know that, right? And I agree. Working in the legal space is one of the more competitive spaces on the internet. But there's an interesting poll here from the American Bar Association Association. This was done just two years ago, where it shows where law firms are spending their money. And I think if you walk around any city, we're here in Miami, if you walk around any city, you'll see bus benches and billboards, and you'll hear radio spots. Those have been kind of the traditional, we call those out of home placements that a lot of law firms default to because a little bit old school, and, and that's kind of what they know. And you see that here in event sponsorship and print media, two of the main channels that law firms use, then we get into LinkedIn, email and Facebook. Now, something that that I think is incredibly important and in what we're going to get into, which is the core of this conversation today, is that there's nothing you can do about the competition. There's a lot of law firms out there and there's a lot of law firms that are spending a lot of money. There's really not a whole lot you can do about that as a law firm. What you can do though, your best bet is to execute better and to execute smarter. And that starts with knowing where to put your money. Putting into bus bench ads, <laughs> putting it into uh, Facebook and social media, not that those are bad channels, right? They're not bad channels per se, but you have to know the right order of operations in order to be successful. Because unless you've got a quarter million dollars a month to spend, if you do, you can call us up, by the way, we'll help you spend it. But if you've got that type of budget to spend, then that's where you see a lot of the big law firms that have the billboards, that have the radio spots, because they've pretty much exhausted the other opportunities and they've kind of arrived there. It's the same thing with Airbnb. Airbnb's kind of pioneered this model where they started with digital, they exploited that a total addressable market there, and now they're moving to TV spots, to radio, because they've reached that level of branding and awareness. With your law firms, you have to start with the channels that are gonna deliver the fastest and highest ROI. And that's really the core of what I wanna talk about today. So that was me just kind of setting everything up here. And what we have here is a list of all the attorney marketing tactics, TV 
ads, at home ads, social media, PR, search engine marketing. We've got them all here. And I've gone through and I've ranked and reviewed them. And I want to kind of go through here with Caesar and give you some thoughts and some opinions here on what are the best marketing channels? Where should you spend your money? What's going to be the most effective way to spend your money right now in 2023? And again, things are changing. Things are changing literally as we speak. This adoption of of AI and artificial intelligence and robots, it's coming and it's going to change us even more. But right now, if you're watching this in 2023, this is going to be the best way for you to invest your money as a law firm to generate high quality cases and not get in that hamster wheel that a lot of law firms get stuck in, which is they're paying a lot of agencies to basically do nothing and, and do no results. So Caesar, how are you feeling? You ready to get into this? Ready. Okay. So the first one up is TV ads. And the way that we have this kind of broken down here is results. So what are the expected results? Five being good. If so if we give it a five, that means you can expect great results. One being bad. If you get a one, it's going to be bad. And this is all within the scope also of lead generation, right? So not talking about branding, not talking about reach, not talking about ego. <laughs> We're talking about the best way to generate leads. So results, cost, time to results, speed, effort on your part as an attorney. How much energy do you have to put into this and scalability? Right. So meaning how far can you take this? And then finally, we tally it up and give it a score over here. Again, the higher the score, the better that that tactic is going to be. So when I click this button here, Caesar, it's going to reveal this this gray banner for TV ads here. I want to give you a guess here. Let's go through here and, and, and give me your estimate here for TV ads. Scale of one to five. What do you think for results? The big reveal here. Uh, I'm going to say very low. I would say a one or a two. Okay. Fair enough. What about cost? Cost, five being, uh, five being the highest in terms of cost, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be somewhere around a four or a five. Okay. Time to results. I would probably go a three there. You're just shooting darts. What about effort for the law firm? Low effort there. Five, I guess is good. And then scalability, last one here. I would say a two. We got a one for results. Yeah, I was right yeah. on the money. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was good. One for results, one for cost. Very, very, very expensive to run TV ads because we're not just talking about the actual placement getting on television, but the creative process working with an agency, incredibly expensive. Time to results. I just gave this a one here because it's my opinion on all this stuff, right? Like nobody sees a TV ad or a bus bench ad, you know, especially like a middle of the night local spot. They're like, oh my God, let me call this PI attorney because something just came up. No, the thing about a lot of very similar to agencies in a sense is that people need a lawyer when they need a lawyer, right? So I look at stuff like TV, billboards, bus benches, stuff like that great branding, right? Great reach. And I hope a lot of people listening don't take the wrong way, but it's a very ego driven marketing approach, right? It's a very, we have a billboard on Biscayne Boulevard, you know, we've made it, but it's like, that's costing you 30 grand a month. And how many leads is that actually returning to you? Very, very few, very, very few. And also it, it's not like you put up a billboard and overnight you get phone calls. It just doesn't work like that because billboards don't drive phone calls. Um, especially too, unfortunately, because everyone's walking around this game Boulevard or driving and they're on their phones. They're not looking up at, at billboards. Um, the effort, right on, gave it a three. Scalability, gave it a two. Because if you're in a local market, there's not a whole lot you can do, especially because you're pressed against the cost of each billboard costs you 20 grand a month. You know, how, how far is that going to scale? So I'm sorry, this is, these are TV ads too. Um, So TV ads, and then I just put at home the exact same score, right? So this again, billboards, bus benches, I put them exactly in the same category here. Again, they're not necessarily bad if you have the budget to do it. If you're Morgan and Morgan and you've got law firms in every single city across this, across the country and you're pushing close to a billion dollars in revenue, absolutely push it all out there. Do billboards, do TV. But if you're a law firm doing less than a couple million year in revenue, I would stay far away from these, despite the ego pressure and uh, just kind of the industry pressure too from seeing other people do it. It's an easy trap to fall into. Do not fall into that trap. So up next, Caesar, we got social media organic. You want to take a stab at this one? What do you think for results? Uh, I think you're still taking the shotgun approach there. So it's not very targeted. So I would go probably a one for the results there. One cost. or two. For social organic, the cost is going to be low because it really doesn't cost you anything other than time. So I guess what, five being good? Fair enough, time to results. Still one in that situation, yeah. Okay, effort. That's gonna be high effort. So if we're saying one being bad, that's gonna yep. probably require more effort. I would say a two for okay. the effort. And then scalability. Uh, two as well. Okay, yeah. So total score, yeah, you're pretty much right yeah. on the mark. So I got it as uh, results as a two. Again, one being bad, so not great results. Costs being three right in the middle. Again, it depends if you're gonna engage, you're probably gonna engage an agency. If not, then it's going to be cheaper than that. That's fine. That's that could go up uh, in terms of a better score for that. Time to results one, very slow, very difficult to build a following. Effort one, again, a lot of effort, a lot of energy on the part of the law firm, and then scalability too. So look, I, I look at social media as 
a new, improved, cheaper, faster, less energy version of TV ads and at-home ads, right? The reason why we're doing this specific for law firms, because everything needs to be viewed in context. For an e-commerce business that's selling face cream, right? I would put social media organic as the top channel. Why? Because it has a great reach. The content that you can post there is gonna be much more engaging. And it's much more of a commodity sale, meaning if so, if you put some good content out there, people stop and scroll, they see it, you can probably get them to purchase, right? When it comes to law firms, again, people are not going to be scrolling Instagram, TikTok to hire a law firm right away. What it can be great for is staying top of mind with people. It can be great for driving referrals. It can be great for if somebody's posting on their story. Hey, I got into a car accident. I, does anybody have any attorney referrals? It's great for that type of stuff. So I strongly recommend that you have a presence there. I strongly recommend that you do your best to keep it updated but if you are not going to put a all-in effort here right and there's some law firms that crush it on instagram and tiktok and essentially what they do the content that i love from them is they'll take like a viral video there's just one guy who takes viral videos that he sees on tiktok and then he'll add commentary on top of it and it's all legal commentary right so like for example let's say like like a crazy ex-husband shows up to his ex-wife's house and starts beating on the door and she's recording it right he'll actually add legal commentary on top of it that talks about like who's in the right who's in the wrong blah blah at least incredible. But if you're not ready to do that because it's incredibly time consuming, then I would say stick to the basis on social media and don't put all your eggs in that basket. Again, have the profiles updated as much as possible, but just keep in mind, it's not going to be a massive driver of results. So Caesar, I'm going to do the next I, one. Here. Yeah, I would just, I would just add to that with social media. I would look at it as well as a conversion channel, uh, probably more than a lead generation channel because one, once people are considering you um, as the attorney that they want to hire, they're going to do their research. And if you have a, an active social profile, if you have these very informational videos, that's just going to establish you. It's going to, it's going to build your cred credibility as the attorney that they want to hire. 100%. I'm going to take the next one here, Caesar, email marketing and give you my thoughts on email marketing. So for email, I give it a two for results. Again, two, uh, one being bad, five being good. Cost is a three right in the middle. It just depends because you have software fees. You also have writing fees if you're not going to write it. Time to results is a five, which is good. And I'll explain that in a second. Effort is a three right in the middle. Scalability is a one, which is bad. So the two ones that I want to highlight here are time to results and scalability, right? So for time to results, I gave it a five. I gave it a five because if you have an existing email list, right? If you've been collecting people for like a newsletter or past clients, you can just push a button, write an email, push a button, and you can get more clients, right? But the caveat there ties into the scalability, which I have as a one, which is bad because you're only going to get as much results as large of an email list as you have. So if you have not been collecting emails for the past couple of years, if you have not been keeping that email list engaged with newsletters and creating content, then it's just not going to scale very well. And if you only have five emails on the list, then that's all you're going to get. So email marketing is, uh, I have it here ranked as a 14. That's going to fall right in the middle of our scale here. But I do think Think email is still incredibly, incredibly important, but that just comes with a big caveat in terms of I put that as like a tier two marketing investment because first you have to build the attention, you have to get the traffic. If you don't have the traffic coming to the website, whether that's coming from social or search or wherever, then it's going to be really difficult to build an email list and it's going to be really difficult for me to convince you to invest a lot of money and time into email marketing. However, again, if you're a Morgan and Morgan that does millions of visits per month, I would probably put email closer to the top because we can convert some of that traffic into emails then we can easily turn those email, that email list into customers, into referrals. It's an owned asset. It's incredibly important. Uh, so the next one I have on the list here, Caesar, is PR. So going out and hiring public relations firms to get you featured on Forbes, on all these different ones. You want to take a stab at this one? I would say results. Um, it's going to be low. I, I'd probably say a three only because um, a lot of times with PR, you get a, an initial increase in traffic if the if the article goes viral or, or what have you but not not necessarily traffic that's going to convert so but i would say a three for results okay cost uh cost it's going to be i would say a two okay time to results not that good time to results uh let's go with a two okay effort low effort for yeah a five scalability I go with a two. All right. So I have it as results as a two, uh, cost as a two. It's expensive. Uh, yeah. Time to results. I have it as a two. Could be a three right there in the middle. Effort as a five. Have that too. No effort. You hire a firm. They do everything. Scalability as a three right in the middle because it just depends if you're a local firm versus a national firm, right? Local firms not going to scale. Very yeah. Well. And, and there's only so, so many uh, publications that are 
going to be profitable or extremely relevant yeah. to the audience that you're going after if you're an attorney. So yeah, and there's 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 kind of two ways that I look at at PR here. One would be as like a branding tactic, tactic, which would be like TV, out of home, and like social, right? Getting featured on relevant publications, it's a branding moment just as much as it is a marketing moment, right? Probably more so. Like you're probably going to get more recognition from being featured in Forbes or Fine Law, whatever that legal journal, whatever that looks like, right? Um, versus the amount of people that are going to actually then go and hire you. Again, keep in mind, the legal space is, is a when it matters type environment. So when people are looking for a, a law firm, absolutely. But if they're not, then it's more of a branding moment. I will say this though, there is a very important indirect part of PR, which ties directly into search engine optimization, which we'll talk about in a second. So we always recommend that if you have the budget, if you've got an extra couple thousand dollars a month to invest, we always recommend a couple of good PR campaigns because it will drastically, drastically, drastically improve your chances of ranking well uh, in organic search. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So I'm gonna take the next one here, Caesar, which is social media paid. It's kind of a area of expertise of mine. So I have it, I have it as a result. I have it as a two, uh, not great cost as a four because it's not too, too, too expensive in comparison to other three as a time to results. It does take some time to get it dialed in um, effort as a two, because you got to create quite a bit of content for social media ads and then scalability as a three, because it scales pretty well. So my overall commentary on social media paid is that it's basically like organic social media, but on steroids because it's a lot faster. It's a lot more effective and you can actually make direct offers, right? Like <clears throat> on your organic social media, you got to create content that has value, that has some sort of interesting, something interesting about it versus on paid, you can make direct ads, direct offers to become a client. So from that point of view, from a lead generation point of view, paid is always better than organic. It just, it, it drives a little bit faster. However, again, same core problem here, which is people are not on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to find a law firm, right? So you can do like an ebook campaign or something like that to build build an email list, but it's it's kind of a long play. So again, I put this one right here in the middle because um, social media is incredibly, incredibly important, but from a lead generation point of view, uh, it's not gonna be top tier. So content marketing is next. And all of these ones here now too, Caesar. I think we should just kind of reveal them all at the same time. And the reason for that is because, so the last ones here, the last five here are content marketing, paid search, uh, so like Google paid ads, local service ads, which are Google ads, but for local, local SEO, which is going to be ranking in that local maps pack organically, and then traditional SEO, which is getting your website to rank organically. So the reason why I put, I want to talk about these all together, Caesar, is because, you know, I, I guess I kind of organized this wrong and maybe gave it away a little bit. If you look over here on the right hand side, it goes from red to green. And all these ones are in the green, meaning to me, these are all the top tactics. And also I want to talk about them all together because these are all functions of search engine marketing, right? Content, the goal of content is to get it ranked organically in search engines, paid search, top of search engines right away with ads, local service ads, same things, but local, localized, local search and traditional SEO obviously are both ranked organically in search engines. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal all these at the same time. And what you're going to notice here is, so for context, TV ads was an eight total score. Uh, content marketing is a 17 and then traditional SEO, which I have as one of our top tactics is a 19. So these next five tactics are all in the top 90 percentile of tactics that we recommend. And again, they all go hand in hand. And I think this is also where a lot of law firms struggle because a lot of people listening to this right now might be like, well, I've invested in SEO or paid ads and they were terrible. Like I spent a lot of money and I didn't get the results. That's a two pronged answer for me, which number one is unfortunately you probably worked with a bad agency. There's a lot of bad agencies out there. Law firms, you have a target on your back. They know how much money you make off cases. They're going to charge you accordingly. And we don't have to go to law school to get degrees here. There's no, <laughs> there's no marketing MBAs required to sell marketing services. We learned this stuff on the internet. Let's just be blunt. So a lot of folks out there figured it out, resold it to you. And unfortunately you just probably got sold poorly. That doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just means that it didn't work the way that they did it for you, right? So that's number one. Number two is going to be the fact that everything here, again, is a search engine marketing tactic, but there's five tactics in here. There's content, there's paid ads, and there's traditional SEO. If you are just doing one of them, meaning if you're just doing like paid search ads and you Google like Miami DUI attorney, right? You're only going to show up for one out of like 30 listings on that page. There's so much noise in Google now. If you really want to dominate search engines, you've got to be present for all, all of them, right? Because you got to spread a wide net here. So the reason that search engine marketing to me is the best tactic here is quite simple. We've talked about it with all these 
these other ones is that people are looking for lawyers when they're looking for lawyers. And what do people do when they're looking for something? They go to Google and they search for it, right? So you're top of mind, you're there, you're present when they need you the most, right? The intent behind what they're looking for is there compared to all this other stuff, which is more branding intent, more secondary intent, more top of mind intent. This is, I got in a car accident and I need help. <laughs> I have questions, I need to talk to an attorney. It is by far the highest converting and most powerful source of traffic. Now, when we get into the cost, right? That can be a little bit of a, of a, of a thing too, because SEO is not cheap. Uh, there are a lot of elements to SEO. You're going to have to hire an expert in an agency. It's not something we recommend doing in house. It's just too competitive and it's pretty much a full-time job to do it. Same thing with paid search. It's just gotten too complicated. It's gotten too, again, you're going against the Morgan and Morgan who's probably spending, spending a million dollars a month on paid search ads. They've got a full team there. You can't just fire up Google ads, put in a few keywords and expect to beat them out. It's a whole system. It's a whole process. It's copywriting. It's research. It's understanding keywords. It's understanding long tail keywords, right? So if you're a personal injury attorney, you don't want to just go after keywords like PI attorney. Why? Because people who are searching for that, the intent behind that is going to be a tire kicker. They're probably just at the beginning of their journey. That's the biggest keyword, but it's not going to be the highest intent keyword. So there's a whole process of understanding the intent behind these keywords in terms of what are the ones that are going to convert the best. And that's usually a process of research and testing. So if you're trying to do search ads yourself, or if you're trying to pay an agency 500 bucks a month to do it, it's just not going to happen. And that's a, a huge reason why so many law firms struggle with this is because I don't want to just say you hired a bad agency but you probably you're probably not paying enough for what you're getting it's the same thing in your industry right there's probably lawyers and law firms out there that undercut your pricing and services and you pay for what you get right because at the end of the day this is an effort and energy based business you don't snap your fingers and rank first and search you have to put time and energy into it it's the same thing with a case right you pay a lot an attorney a thousand bucks to argue a case for you he's only gonna, he or she's only going to put in two hours right it's just not enough it's the same thing with this there's a, a process that you have to go through to get the success and results but once once you get there, it's a faucet, right? There's just nothing more powerful than being hyper present while people are searching for you. So Caesar, I don't know if you have any more any more comments on this chart or search engine marketing. Yeah, yeah well, the the uh, top uh, marketing channels are what considered uh, to be push marketing, where you're pushing yourself in front of people and hoping it's like the spray and pray. You're hoping that you're getting in front of somebody who happens to need your service at the moment. The uh, search engine uh, marketing tactics are all uh, pull. So you're pulling in people that are already raising their hand. They're going to, you're fishing in the right pond. Now it's just a matter of having the right bait so that you're outranking competitors and you're optimizing your ads. So you're uh, ranking ahead of them when it comes to paid marketing, the higher your ad ranks, actually the lower you pay uh, per click. So, and with organic, it does take some time, but again, it's really really understanding how to strategize where you're you're not necessarily you have the the target goal is always going to be the keyword that has the ton of search volume DUI lawyer Miami of course that has a lot of search volume any DUI lawyer would love to rank for that just for the volume and at that point you're ranking organically so it's not costing you anything people go into your website but that needs to be more of the longer term strategy where what separates a good agency or, or good advice from bad advice is how to optimize your website to target uh, less search volume keywords, but higher intent so that the traffic that you are getting are turning more likelihood of that traffic turning into phone calls, leads and cases versus just vanity traffic where you look at your organic traffic report and you see, yeah, the traffic is going through the roof. But at the end of the day, if that's not equating into more into more cases, then it does you no good. So just wanted to add that last bit of a uh, note there. Yeah, always good insight. So we actually have developed a really good tool analysis internally, we call it the traffic and lead projection analysis. What it does is it takes data from your website. It takes data from your competitors, the market, both organic and paid data. It pulls it into a database and then it builds a forecast. And it's really, really important. The offer is you book a call with us. We'll run it for you for free. And we'll talk to you about it to see if search engine marketing is a good fit for your law firm. Cause I'm going to be blunt and honest, like it's not a good fit for every law firm. And the data will tell you if it is, because it will tell you if the numbers are there, if the volume is there, and if there's enough conversion value out there in order for you to invest money into this uh, and try and bring it in house. So if you're interested in that, 
you can hit the link below this video, below this podcast. It will take you to a Calendly booking form. Just book a time that works for you. And then we'll have a quick conversation about your firm and we'll run the analysis. And uh, a lot of law firms that we've run this for are really, really appreciative of it because, um, you know, we try and position ourselves as the good guys out there and, and open and honest. And, and that's really why we developed this report because we're not going to take your money unless we feel like we can help you. So as always, appreciate all your time and your attention and we'll see you next week's episode. See you.